this warm up does a nice job in reviewing all of the methods that we've learned so far in finding a missing side of a right triangle. At the top, in examples one through four, you have to use either the Pythagorean theorem or special right triangles as stated in the directions. So number one, given two legs of a right triangle whose measurements are eight and 15, find the length of the hypotenuse. Now this is a triple, so the hypotenuse is 17. If you didn't know this, you could use the Pythagorean theorem and the Pythagorean states that the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the sum of the legs squared. Now eight squared is 64, 15 squared is 225. The sum of 225 and 64 is the square root of 289, which is 17. In example number two, Given a right triangle where one of the acute angles is 45, we know the other acute angle is also 45, as the acute angles in a right triangle are complementary. And therefore, since it is an isosceles right triangle, the legs are congruent, so this leg is also seven radical two. And the hypotenuse is equal to leg radical two. So x equals seven radical two radical two. Well radical two times radical two is the square root of four, and the square root of four is two, therefore two times seven is 14. So 14 equals x. Now what I'm gonna do before I answer number three and number four, is I'm going to draw the special right triangle for the 30, 60, 90 right above it in a space that I have right here. It's not real straight, so I'll try to draw that again. I'm just using my Microsoft Surface to record. It's kind of hard to rest your hand and use the stylus. So I'm gonna say this is 60, this angle is 30, so opposite the 30 in a 30, 60, 90, the side is N. Opposite the 60 is that, um, that number radical three. And then the hypotenuse is twice that number. So down below in number three, we're given the side opposite the 30 is 21, and that's our favorite case. So if opposite the Again, the angle of 30 degrees is 21. That means the N everywhere is 21. So opposite the 60 degrees would be N radical three. So Y is equal to 21 radical three. And then the hypotenuse would be two times 21. So X is equal to 42. In the triangle to the right, we have the side opposite the 60 as 12. And the side opposite the 60 is n radical three. So one way to do this is to set the 12 equal to the n radical three and to solve for n. So divide by radical three. You may have the relationship memorized. Um, n is equal to 12 over radical three. So we have to rationalize the denominator. So multiply by radical three over radical three, and we get 12 radical three over three. And we can reduce 12 divided by three is four radical three. So n is four radical three, and the n is the number opposite the 30 degree angle. So since one of the acute angles is 60, we know the other acute angle is 30. So X is equal to the N. So X is equal to four radical three. And then the hypotenuse is double the shorter leg. So if you double four radical three, you get eight radical three. Okay. So moving down to five through eight, where we have to use our trigonometric ratios to solve. Whoops, let's move that up a little bit. 
and I do want to write there, or somewhere off to the side, the Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, so in the first triangle, according to that 70, um, 70 degree angle, we don't have the side opposite, okay? But we do have the side adjacent, so we have the A, and we have the H, or hypotenuse. So that means we're gonna use tangent, or I'm sorry, not tangent. The A and the H is cosine. So the cosine of 70 degrees is equal to, so the ratio for the cosine of 70 is equal to the length of the side adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's equal to 15 over x. Put that over one and cross multiply. One times 15 is 15. And then x times the cosine of 70 is x cosine of 70 degrees. Divide by the cosine of 70. Now I don't have um, the graphing calculator installed on my surface, so you'll have to divide that on your calculator. I suggest finding the cosine of 70 first. So typing in the cosine of 70 degrees I get approximately 0 0.3420, but I'm gonna leave that number in the calculator and do 15 divided by that answer. And I get approximately, um, to the nearest tenth, 43.85, so that rounds to 43.9. So x is approximately 43.9. We're not given a unit, so we can leave it as that. And number six, According to the angle that's given, we have the side opposite. We do not have the hypotenuse, but we have the side adjacent. So given opposite adjacent, that's tangent. So tangent of 25 degrees equals adjacent, um, or opposite rather, which is x over adjacent 18. So let's put this over one and one times x is x, and then 18 times tangent of 25. So type that into your calculator. Tangent of 25 degrees, I get about 0.4663 times 18. Rounded to the nearest tenth, x is approximately 8.4. Okay, and the last two. Ah, and number uh, seven and eight, um, we're going to use the trig. We don't have to use trig because it's a special right triangle, but we're gonna use the trig to show that we do get the same answers as above, we just get it in decimal form. Okay, so we'll compare those at the end. So we know from example number two that the hypotenuse x, this is from example number two, is 14. We already did that. But let's just show with trig that we do get the same answer. So according to the angle, we have the side opposite and we have the hypotenuse, so that's gonna be sine. So the sine, whoops. Sorry about that, my hand hit the chrome at the bottom. So it's the sine of 45 equals opposite, which is seven radical two over hypotenuse. Put that over one cross multiply. We have x sine of 45 equals one times seven radical two, which is seven radical two. Divide by the sine of 45 degrees. We 
we get x equals, so take the sine of 45, I would do that first, and then take 7 radical 2 and divide that by the answer above. So 7 radical 2 divided by the sine of 45, we get exactly 14. But rounded to the nearest tenth, we will write 14.0. Okay, and the last one. So using trig, and I'm going to use two trig ratios. So we know we have the side opposite. Okay, one ratio we're going to need adjacent. So that's going to be tangent. So let's write that here. Tangent of 60 degrees equals 12 over x. Put that over 1 and cross multiply. 12 times 1 is 12. And then x times the tan of 60 is x tan of 60 degrees. Divide by tan of 60. Those cancel. So find the tangent of 60 first, and then 12 divided by that answer. We get 6.92. So x is approximately, whoops, not equals. is approximately 6.9. Now above in number 8, or above um, the same triangles we see in number 8, which is number 4, we got x, so if you look up at 4, we got x as 4 radical 3. So now type in 4 radical 3 in your calculator, and you see you do get the same decimal. Okay, so this is when you use trig, you get an approximated answer, where with the radical, you get an exact answer. Okay, so that's a big difference. And last, let me pick a different color. Um, to find y, we're still going to use the 12, so we still have opposite, now we have hypotenuse. So the sine of 60 degrees is equal to 12 over y. Put it over 1 and cross multiply. We have 12 equals y sine of 60 degrees. So divide by the sine of 60. Cancels, I'm going to write that over here. Um, 12 divided by the sine of 60. So type that in your calculator. And we get approximately 13.9. And if we go above, that y value in terms of a radical was 8 radical 3. So type 8 radical 3 in your calculator and you see it's approximately 13.9. So once again, trig gives you an approximated answer where the radical using the special right triangles gives you an exact answer.